All right, so who am I? Marco Figueroa, Marco Trump, Neil Caffrey, <laughs> Michael Weston. We are an allocated space. There's five of us here in Severn, Maryland. So that's pretty cool. Some of the people that don't know me might think I'm this. The people that do know me might know me as this. But at the end of the day, who doesn't want to be known as this? That dude is the man. Decode, I think you're doing that on purpose in San Diego, bro. Stop. <laughs> and then there's this guy, Dave Marcus. Oh, you can't even, perfect, perfect. So whoever doesn't know about Four Loco, it is insane. It will drive people up the wall and you do not want to drink that. Dave? I'll testify. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Kind of nasty tasting, but it's okay. Yeah, it is nasty. Um, by the way, he's speaking right after me. The best presentation of the year I've seen. No bullshit. All right, my credibility slide. Who really cares? But I spoke at DEF CON, published at Hack9, consulted for a few Fortune 100 companies. So let me paint the picture for you. In 2003, there was a the blackout. Everybody thinks that it trickled down from Canada when the power plant blew or something and trickled down. People don't understand and don't know that that same week, the slammer came out and it hit that facility. And guess what happened? Allegedly, right? Oh my God, he's gonna keep on, hold on one second. <laughs> now he's just making remarks over here. Let me quit this. Yeah, I'll get you, Decode. Oh, Jabra, I got you too. So, moving on. So, cyber insecurity. Obviously, everyone knows we are losing this battle. The more products that come out by McAfee and Symantec, people try to bypass it. It's just inevitable. If you're a target, you're gonna get looked out after. If, if uh, you want to, go ahead and Google search the NPR cyber insecurity. <laughs> I shut off my tweet and you still get me. We're on speakerphone. Speakerphone, speakerphone. Decode, shut up. I mean, I'm pulling my battery out, bro. And don't call my brother. Because he's over there, back there. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to look this up, uh, NPR cybersecurity is telling you, uh, Tony Blair over here, that every second, 200 pieces of malware get released. Okay. So yeah, we're losing the war. This it's just a losing battle. It's like, how can you protect your people when they're always getting screwed? So here's some of my hacker ESPN highlights. April 2007, 20 terabytes were stolen from a government site. Now, how this happened, I don't know, because 20 terabytes is a lot. So the best thing out of this is Virginia. Since we're in Virginia, the Social Security uh, Department got hacked and basically they were held from ransom and they paid the ransom. And somebody told me, that didn't happen, I looked it up. Well, 60 Minutes, look up 60 Minutes about the hacker that hacked uh, the VA Social Security. And what they did was they basically stole the information and said, if you don't pay me, we're gonna release it on forums. Paid. Come on. I think it was, there you go. 10 million, and they were probably happily, you know, they was just like, you want 11 million? Or you want 12, they probably overpaid them. So Zeus 2009, Malware Award of the Year for me. Um, this gentleman right here works at McAfee. What is this year's big thing? I don't know, Spy Eye and Zeus maybe. Zeus? Zeus and Spy Eye. Still with Zeus? Yeah, Zeus is still. So Zeus is still running wild. Last year, it did the most damage. And what's great about this, definitely Google Zeus and Symantec, they'll show you a video of what it does. And 
If you look at this video, it is professionals. Professionals, I guess because the economy is bad or whatever the case is, it could be other governments, they are doing back end like databases. It is insane. You know that you have a team of people. This is like real big cyber, cyber crime and it's just really insane. Definitely look that up. So how can you protect yourself against all of this? What I've seen and what I've used is just my experience and it helped me out. And if you want to go ahead, this is all free. I am? Oh, right here? <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you, Kev. That's why you have a big brother. So, it's a versatile tool that collects malware. You just put it on a box, you dump it on the network, and it basically collects binaries. Um, what Nepethys does, it emulates vulnerabilities like MS-06-45 uh, and MS-08-67. And it just collects binaries and it, you can push it to a specific server if you want, so it could be centralized. There we go. So why is this basically relevant? Because Symantec, I'm not gonna say McAfee, Symantec sucks. Anybody have problems where you get some malware and it doesn't detect? Because it's signature base, obviously, you know? So the better you know the malware that's on your network, the faster you can mitigate all the risk and issues that you have. And if one computer gets, you know, infected and you don't have it mitigated, what's going to happen? It's going to spread like wildfire. Well, this helps you mitigate all of that. So my prior company about a year ago, I was consult consulting at a company. The company is not, by the way, it's a soda company and it's not over there. Where's, where's Marcus at? Dave? Which one? Which one? There it goes, there it goes. Marcus, what's up with Pepsi over there, man? <laughs> <laughs> so I used to consult for Pepsi and it had over 200,000 workstations all over the world. And we would get infected and the business unit will get maybe two or 300 overnight infections. And then the following day, it'll be at 800. So we, we were figuring out, well, Symantec's not helping us because it's not detecting any of the viruses. And then when we pushed it to them, we didn't get signatures back for four or five days. So what happens? It just moves on to another business unit and infects that. And then from Asia, we would get infected in Latin America, Europe, Middle East Africa. So we decided since it's free, Nepotus is free, we're gonna deploy it in the largest BU in that specific region. In Mexico was Monterey, in Latin America, it was Brazil. And then what we did was we deployed it and then we bought CW Sandbox. Now, if you're in a large company, CW Sandbox only costs $12,000, so that's nothing. So basically we put it in a central location, all the malware that was captured, was basically funneled in through Nepethys, pushed up to that CW Sandbox and basically reversed. Now, here's the thing, CW Sandbox is not the end all of all malware. It only picks up about like 50 or 60%. And some of the new stuff that, you know, is coming out, it's wicked. You have in a lot of VM protect, a lot of obfuscated code, the binaries, so CW Sandbox just doesn't work. Do you have any other recommendation? I like Anubis. Anubis? Okay. So this is Nepetus modules, like I was just saying. It has MS-04, and last night, me and Marcus were speaking, and they answer emails, the people from Nepetus that created it, but it's not supported and updated. So it's kind of outdated, but it's still useful, and I'm gonna, tell you the shortcomings with Nepethys and why at the end of the day it's not a good product. 
it does its job, but it needs to be updated. So this is how you would install Nepenthes or Nepethys, the way you want to call it. The Windows users, I'm sorry, you can't install it. So this is a sample report. And now, once we installed this and viruses were getting hit on these boxes and pushed up to CW Sandbox, we would take these reports and submit them to Symantec. So instead of four or five days getting back uh, that, that signature, it would take us four, eight, maybe two days max. So it cut down the infections by, I would say, two or three hundred off the back. So here's a sample report. <clears throat> you can look, it saves the binary as an MD5 hash. It shows the PID on it. Once it goes into CW Sandbox, it tries to install a Windows System 32, Armon.exe. You can see lower where it tries to install it at, the start reason, as well as Clickers wigging out on me. So it shows, oh, fail. <sighs> All right, cool. So you see it tries to call out to secccc.serveftp.com. And then right below it, it tries to go to the specific IP address. The next slide shows what port it's trying to go out on. And it's definitely trying to connect to a botnet. You see the nick, the nickname, Tibia, and the password is Tibia Blows. So it also opens up a listening port 1910. So this is all useful information that Symantec can have and basically pump it out quick, pump out the signatures quick to you. So what's your general approach? You know, after being in this industry a lot, a lot of years, you know that there aren't that many, well, let me rephrase that. Some of the people you work with, you'd be like, why are you even in IT? Seriously, seriously. And where I work at, man, tools, man, tools. <clears throat> for real. Probably on Monday, I probably won't have a job for saying that, but who gives a fuck? <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can mention that later. Anyway, we had, when I was living in New York, like a year ago, our box kept on getting hit with like stuff. So I did a trace, and this is why I really started using Nepethys and different type, and then looking like HoneyD and looking for different honeypots, because we were getting hit so often by China on our ISP. But um, yeah. Going back to this slide. Thanks for reminding me, Kev. Going back to this slide. Uh, lost my train of thought. Thanks, Kev. Tools. There we go. Tools. Tools. Yeah, and how your coworkers, some of your coworkers are clueless and they're only picking up checks. Um, I got a name for them, by the way. And I'm coining this phrase since we're on Ustream. They're clickologists. <laughs> they just like clicking. You ever hear them click, 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 click? That's them. They got their PhD in clickology. So, <clears throat> yeah, set up your environment in a closed environment. You know, <laughs> there's some people that would take malware and just run it on a live box and they'd be like, yeah, don't worry. I'll use antivirus to detect it or something like that. Or they'll use, <laughs> this is a funny one, they'll use VMware and run it on a VMware and like, yeah, don't worry about it. I'm good. I'm running it on a VMware and the NIC card is bridged. I'm like, dude, seriously? <laughs> like, are you stupid or are you just playing? So here are some of the tools. If you don't know how to like reverse engineer stuff, IDA Pro, WinDebugger, all that cool stuff. Um, if you have any questions, I think we're going to be here all night. So you can come over give you some tutorials if you don't know any reversing. So here's the limitations with Nepethys. You can only download the binary. The poor documentation, they suck. They is the worst. Then if you scan Nmap, 
with like the Nepethys box, you'll see a signature for Nepethys on there on port 21. It'll just say Nepethys box. Don't mess with me because it's a honeypot. Uh, and malware is getting smarter. Like I said, we were talking yesterday, there's 200 malwares that come out a second. And every year, if you look at the trend, do you guys have a website for that trend? So if you look up uh, on Google, you could take a look at that. So that's the first presentation. I got two on here. So any questions on that? If not, I'm swinging down to the other presentation. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. That it's going to be a while before you get a signature back just seems like the inherent flaw that once, I mean, if you could turn it around in three hours and you could protect your servers one continent over and you could be good, that seems like the solution. Like, it seems like the basic problem is, takes days. Yeah, I think that'll fix. I'm not too sure, seriously. I'm just giving you my experiences. We went from having signatures for four days to hours because of this just setting that environment up. And we went from 1,000, 2,000 infections to only having 500, 300. And is it getting smarter? I mean, people are really getting smarter. People are laid off. They're trying to get money any way they can. And you know, when it's easy, people are like, shit, I know I'm not gonna get caught. I'm gonna write some cool shit. And that's what's happening, they're winning. There's no question about it. Any other questions on that? Yeah. Is that on that? Just on the Nepenthes site, the other day they were saying, um, they were saying use DNA. Hmm? That the Nepenthes site was uh, suggesting that you use DNA. 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 Okay. I, that's good to know. I, don't, I didn't hear about it. DNA is the DNA. D I N O N. Okay. D A E. Sorry, A E A. I mean, more lost now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I guess it's another honey pot site. Like You good. All right, so this is my this is my baby. Kev, you want to come up because you're doing the second half with me. That was the first. That was the first part. That's. I should have called that that presentation instead of nepotist like protect your shit with nepotist. So you want to introduce yourself? I just want to say one thing about the nepotist. Uh, Marcus brought up a good point. If more. Um, like Symantec or uh, McAfee or any of these AV companies would allow people to make their own DAT files, I think that'll be an easier way to start protecting your system a lot quicker. Yeah. Pertaining to the gentleman on this side that spoke about that. Uh, now, getting to the Shaolin tools. Um, I'm Kevin, Marco's brother. If anybody doesn't know by now, every con that we go to, they know us as brothers. They don't know us as individuals. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. I think we're like the only two Puerto Ricans in the hacker community. I, I was going to say the hacker community, you know? So it's, 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 there's a lot of AKAs. You Puerto Rican? What? They own the edit. I'm sorry about this. You know, this is a Puerto Rican thing right here. <laughs> wow. We got to be sure we can get up together. I'm, very proud of that, man. Yeah. It's not. You just increased the Puerto Rican security community. Woo! Listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in any case, uh, me and my brother coming out with these tools, Shaolin tools, um, about two years ago. Well, it's been a little bit longer than that, but we've been trying to get into Black Hat and talk. I don't want to play the racist card, but it, it always seems like there's not enough of us speaking. Go back one slide. Hold on. You want to? I'm not even touching the damn thing. I said you're going into the slides, uh -oh. which has to All right, hold on. I'll pass this off to my brother. He'll click it there. Well, in any case, the reason why was we decided what is going to make and set the tone for us to do this. And we 
we saw a martial arts flick and we were like, hey, let's do 36 Chambers. And that was a whole idea behind this. So I'll pass this off to my brother and... Uh, So yeah, like he was saying, for the last three years, we submitted to Black Hat, we got denied, whatever. So we were frustrated, baffled, what the hell's going on? You start questioning your judo skills and your kung fu skills when you get denied that often. And I'm like, what the hell? So, you know, with Einstein concentration and imagination, you know, yeah. You had 36 chambers of Shaolin tools were born. And uh, if you see the picture, it's fuzzed out there. This was like a month ago at Oasis of the Seas and we was basically hanging out, chilling, coding on Shaolin tools, so. Uh, one of the things that I really liked about it, we went on vacation and we went on this boat cruise. So we had no cell phones, no communication to the outside world. So we got some really good work done. Uh, of course, the family was kind of upset because we brought laptops. Uh, another good joke was uh, while going on the laptop, uh, while going on a boat cruise, uh, you had TSA looking at our bags, and they were wondering why are two people bringing seven laptops with them on a damn boat cruise? <laughs> and we were like, "Hey, we're going on vacation," <laughs> but uh, so it was a good way for us to brainstorm and try to pull things out the ether in order to make these uh, tools better. And another thing that we decided uh, and why we did this was it's unheard of uh, people to come out with 36 tools at one shot. And we figured uh, it'll keep the community very occupied with these tools. Plus you have a lot of rum and coke on that on Oasis of the Seas. So what is Shaolin Tools? It's 36 chambers of unreleased tools and stuff like that. Offensive and defensive security tools. So people just, when they release stuff, is just exploiting or I'm just putting out one tool. Imagine that, one con, 36 tools, hold that. So why is this project gonna be epic? I don't suggest you do that again. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I really don't have too much to say about the slide except that it is going to be epic. I've never heard of anything, and not that I want to toot my own horn or anything like that, but I've never heard of anybody even putting out three tools in one shot. The uh, only person that comes close is FX, and he put two of them in one shot. That's epic. <laughs> That's epic. <laughs> so it's going to be released at Black Hat Las Vegas 2011. And if you go to the website right now, there's just a countdown. If the, if the Puerto Ricans get accepted to Black Hat. Oh, man. That's documented. That's all right. So, <laughs> we'll, yeah, 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 social engineering Black Hat. Yeah, oh, how, how many times were you denied, Joe? Oh, shit, man. First time I could keep going at the club. <laughs> Oh yeah. So we're working on getting multiple tracks. Hopefully we get accepted. Then we're gonna work at multiple track tracks. And yeah, we're gonna do it. So we have programmers, beta testers, doc writers, um, some web developers, and the list is growing on and on and on. And I know you want to speak about that. Now we. <laughs> We always looking for developers and beta testers, except uh, we have a little crew over here. We call ourselves MBA, and for the females, excuse me, but this MBA crew is called No Bitches Allowed, because you have a lot of people. And I'm not saying bitches in the terms of women. I'm just saying bitches in terms of men, because a lot of these guys talk all this stuff. And when it's time for them to showboat and really get on a keyboard and do their thing, they run off. So we get all these people wanting to help out and do these 36 chambers, and we're willing to do a lot. We got flip cameras for the people that are involved so they can video themselves and their own ideas and thoughts. But what happens is they come in, they get excited, they do a couple of things, and then they're off on the runnings again. And 
I, that one little portion really upsets me, and that's why I don't tend to deal with people that want to come on board. I just push them over to my brother uh, and let him deal with them. But for the document writers and uh, beta testers, I'm thinking about like July for all the people that do want to get on board with that. Most of the tools will pretty much all be finished, so the more document writers that we have, the better it is, and we can just push them out. But for this beginning stages, uh, it's really, really difficult to find good coders and uh, reliable coders that want to do things. So if anybody in here wants to participate in helping us make this go forward, by all means, we'll be here all night. You can come and speak to us. Um, and we do have one test before you get put on as a developer. If you pass this test, then you get put on the team. If not, oh well. As you can see in the people that know my brother, he's not kind of politically correct, right? He's just straight up like, I don't give a damn. That's why he pushes it over to me. <laughs> so the making, what's gonna make this even epic is that we're gonna be doing a documentary. Um, we're gonna be putting up, we already have a website, but we're gonna put up another website and all the programmers, like he said, is gonna get a flip camera. And that's just to record from when we started to the release date. And it's probably gonna be released like in September after because we wanna catch the footage for Shaolin Tools at Black Hat at DEF CON. And this is not pushing. There we go. Oh, wait, wait, after the trailer. Oh, wait. Sorry about that. You know, when it comes to a project this big, you know, it's really about consistency and how much you're willing to put Don't in. Don't worry, it's showing up on, on here though. Oh, okay. You'll see it. It's four, Great. second four, four. Four. full pairs, and see how it yeah. is. It's going to be a it's going to be ups and downs. Yeah, you can do it. I know I'm focused on it and other people are like, that's a great idea, but I understand when it comes down to it. It's called PR through skate. The market needed it. You see, I mean, come on, I mean, we're, we're, we're actually, we're actually the oddballs in the group now that we grasp everything. And the documentary is just going to be alongside of it. It's their gift, but when it comes down to it, you have to look yourself in the mirror at 3 and 4 a.m. when you're coding. Well, this is for the love, man. The more we have, the better it is. Oh, so. You're a murderer for what? I thought it was just a good stuff. I mean, right? Don't do shit. He wanted to send systems in one day. This is zero cool, man. <laughs> Uh, the reason why we wanted to do the documentary is a lot of people don't tend to realize unless you're actually making a program how difficult the journey is from start to beginning and we figured if we went and did this uh, start to end I'm sorry the liquor is already talking um, from start to end people don't realize what it takes to get this going and how motivated that person, that individual has to become. So for people that do develop and put things out, I really, really thank you so much for helping the community. And I think if they went one step further uh, by making documentaries, people could actually visually see what it takes. Yes, Marcus? Decode, uh, kind of kind of Deco, you have no questions, nothing. Stop it. Call me on my cell phone. Stop bothering us. Um, oh, okay, I'll answer that, Deco. That, that was a good question. Uh, <laughs> I, at least on my behalf, I don't deal with Windows. I will never deal with Windows. Um, I'm not doing anything for Windows. It's all going to be based on Mac and uh, Linux. Python. Uh, yeah, it's going to be written in Python. Um, we're going to have some C types in there also. What, what he's saying is he don't give a 
give a shit if it works on Windows or not. Yeah, like for the people that want to work, make it work on Windows, I'm sorry. I'm not really, you know, doing anything with that. I'm just basically doing it for uh, Linux and Macs and Unix boxes. Free BSD also. What's the smarter remark he has? What's the requirements? You can have a shitty processor and it'll still run. As long as it could, you could put BSD on there or uh, Ubuntu or Debian or what's the shitty Linux system you use? Which one? Gen 2. Gen 2. That's it. Gen 2. <laughs> so that's it. There you go, Decode. Keep on, keep on feeding the questions. What else you got? Yes. If you want to capture the jury in the thing, you got to get the wives tape on it. The wives? <laughs> the wives? You, you mean if you're married, the wives you're talking about? Well, I, I'm going to tell you this. I'm married and I worship the ground my wife walks on because she is so supportive of me standing 18 hours inside my dungeon coding. I only come up to breathe air and play with my child and then after that it's back to the drawing board. I don't have no wife. I go to strip clubs. <laughs> Word. So, <laughs> we have uh, five chambers completed. Um, they're under wrap though. We're not, we're not really talking about it except the ones that are obvious because certain reasons. Charlotte Honeypot because I seen Nepenthes and I know the weakness and what I can do to help better the shit. And Shaolin Enum, which is his program, which does enumerations, is pretty cool. It's very fast. I don't know anything that's like faster from my perspective. And do you have anything else? Um, the Enum program that I wrote, um, just to speak real briefly about it, I got tired of remembering like five, six, seven different switches for like five, six different programs. So instead of, the, you, instead of using like four or five different programs, I just made one program that does all type of enumeration. It was a quicker way to get the job done faster at a beginning stage of pen testing. And for the honeypot, uh, I really think it was very important for us to make a honeypot. And one of the main reasons was back in New York where we live at in our house, uh, I was sick and tired of China hitting our box. So I, I swear to God that I think that China owns Cablevision in some way <laughs> or the other. <laughs> because the amount of times they were slamming our uh, pipelines were ridiculous. So we had two different type of pipelines. We had a regular three megabit pipeline for the family, and then we had a 50 meg pipeline. And no matter which way we go, uh, it was just always getting slammed. We SQL slammer parties, uh, people trying to throw everything at us, and it was just unbelievable. So that's one of the ideas on why we wanted to start our, our own honeypot. And pertaining to Nepotis, I think it's a great product for beginners to start off, but they do have some flaws. And that's why we decided to go ahead and uh, do these two programs. Uh, there's more that already been developed, but we don't want to speak out. Uh, you're having your own conversation. Is that like a un hacker union meeting over there? What? He just threw a monkey wrench. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me that before, man? That was re I don't know Exactly. That's what you get, the entertainment. What was it You got I'm a hacker. No, 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 no. Respect, respect that. Respect that. I know you're gonna that's his thing. Oh my god. So it was gonna be a little party. It was gonna be a shot glass. That's what we always do. We always have the shot glasses. We have the music on. Sorry. Where are we?
sir, this I didn't get a I didn't get a line from my speaker, Marcus. But it's all right. One of the things that we always do is, like he said, entertainment. Um, this last portion that I wanted to do, I guess I can't do. I was going to give out questions, and for the people that got the answers right, you would come up and take a shot. But I guess there's no drinking until 9 o'clock. And just to go against the grain, just because I love to do that and I'm not politically correct, that's why I had to take that shot. And I, oh, one thing, um, you can hit, hit us up at uh, on Twitter or any websites. I'm honored to speak at the first Dojo Con, brother. Is the second Dojo Con? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ooh. <laughs> well, it, I guess it shows how much. My rebuttal on that is we just met Marcus last year at SmooCon, so we didn't know about the first one. So to us, this is the, fir the first dojo. <laughs> I'm, damn, I feel like it. All right, so thanks. Yeah, nine o'clock. I guess we pop. Oh, we could go out in the parking lot. Inside the car and just drive out. Anybody else have any questions? Any questions? All right, all right, let's go to the All right, real quick, real quick. Hey, uh, I really encourage, if you live in Maryland, if you live up in Maryland, you should really come by the uh, unallocated space. Uh, I really, I hang out with these guys all the time there. I mean, there's a lot of smart people in there, and we just, all day we're talking about stuff like this, and, and talking about life. And the reason why I like these guys is like, yeah, th they're geeks. <laughs> they're definitely geeks, but man, we really had a really good discussion, and it's more about, it's more than just about tech at the space. I mean, we talk about life in general, and uh, it's a really good way to network with people. So if, if you're in Merlin, you gotta stop through. You gotta come to an allocated space and uh, chop it up with these guys. Uh, I do all the time. Half time is not about tech. So seriously, you gotta come there. Uh, thanks for representing Bronx Brothers. Sorry for spoiling the shots. No, no, that's all right. <laughs> and, uh, you, you're not gonna get. Hey, from the first time I met these guys, cool as anything. Joe, I mean, Dave up here, Exile, everybody, you gotta just come through uh, unallocated. It's like real cool people, it's real smart there, so. Uh, Is it Southern Maryland? In Southern Maryland, um, the hacker space has been open since October 1st. Uh, it's really, really cool. I, I like that we have so many different type of things. Um, and not to downplay reverse space. I'm not saying this to downplay reverse space. I'm just saying this is where we hang out at and where we do our hacking and building stuff. We, they have robotic building. Um, we're trying to do miniature CTF. We're trying to teach classes, like Metexploit Mondays and everything. And I'm just gonna bring Joe up real quick because he was there last night. So he could give you his experience of his first time coming over here. Yeah, hey guys, uh, I actually want to give a shout out to the Hackerspace too. Um, really, most of you guys know me, you know. Um, I started No Bitches Allowed a couple of years ago, um, generally because I really hated all the hacker groupies. I couldn't stand all of them. I would go to the con and I was like, no, bitches, 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 bitches. I'm not following all these people around. Fuck that, I can Google, I'll learn to hack my damn self. And I wasn't all about following a bunch of people. And that's really kind of how NBA started. But the one part that I really should have been saying was what got me into hacking, and that was my first DEF CON experience. So I was at DEF CON, and I was just walking around, and the cool thing that I loved about DEF CON is everybody I met, freaking purple hair and piercings, and you know, dudes was gay, and people was hitting the blunt, and nobody gave a shit that I was black. Nobody cared about where I worked. All that mattered was you're into this hacking thing. And what I wanted to say about the hackerspace was, that's what it was like for me there last night. We were laughing, we were drinking, we were hacking, guys were teaching me lock picking, we were hanging out fucking just talking shit. It was the coolest time I've had in years, just to just hang out and it didn't matter. It was all kinds of racist jokes up in there. It was funny <laughs> as hell. I had the time of my life. It was so much fun to just hang out and drink and talk shit. And guys, I just want to say how hackerspace and what's going on with Unallocated, mad love. Love it, man. I'm serious. 